Good morning, folks. This is Todd Coburn with the syllabus for Arrow 3271. Let's take a look at it here. This shows the first page of the syllabus for Arrow 3271. This is the most important page because it shows everything we're going to cover during this class. If you take a look, you'll see that every topic we're going to cover is listed along with the chapters from our Aerospace Strength Handbook that deal with those concepts. Now, all of this material builds on Aero 3261, our Structures 1 content, so you're going to make sure you understand that material also. Also, uh, we need to be masters of statics, so you may want to review your statics principles as well. But for Aero 3271, this shows the major concepts. We're going to look at plastic bending. We're going to look at fatigue, damage tolerance. We're going to go into fasteners in detail. We're going to go into welding processes and, and analysis. And then we're going to go into stability, looking at the stability for flat plates, curved panels, cylinders, crippling, and uh, other things. And then we'll take a quick look at shear resistant beams which is a basic technique we're going to use for a lot of aerospace analysis that will conclude this class. And we see every topic listed here. Along with your final exam, you're going to want to keep an eye on your section, whether you're section one or section two. Notice the section two's uh, exam occurs first and then section one is later. So make sure you uh, attend your own exam. Now, the rest of the seven pages of the syllabus uh, includes critical information about this class. And uh, I'm going to uh, just go into the first next page, which is right here, which gives, uh, which introduces our textbook that you're going to be needing for this class, as long as with some recommended supplemental reading. The remainder of the discussion of the concepts in this syllabus, you're going to want to pay careful attention to, and I'm going to revert back to my recording for the Aero 3261 syllabus, which is identical. So everything I'm going to tell you from here on out is identical, but you'll see the Aero 3261 banner at the top because the information is the same between the classes for the rest of it. The next page gives a little welcome, talks about me and how to contact me, and has our basic course information. First, you're gonna need that textbook that's under required hard copy text. You'll notice there are some other texts. Brune's analysis and design of flight vehicle structures is an icon in the aerospace industry used by structures professionals everywhere. I would encourage you to get that now. While my books, the first and second volumes, basically hit all the key parts of that that we're going to need in our career, there are going to be pictures and examples and uh, things available in that text that you uh, will be beneficial to your career if you're interested in structures. Uh, if you are struggling with my class and you want more example problems, my book is short on example problems, you're going to want to get Baron Johnson's Mechanics and Materials book. Any addition will be fine. It has a lot of example problems and other problems with answers in the back that you can practice on for maybe 70-ish or more percent of the content that we're going to cover in this course. And then Flavel's book is a good one too with a lot of aerospace applications and techniques. Uh, the main one you're going to want to supplement our primary text is probably Beer and Johnson's book, but Brune is a great reference to have on your shelf. If this syllabus talks about face-to-face, -face, that's how this class will run, but because outside events have caused us to go online a few times, it also addresses what happens if we go online, okay? This next page goes through my expectations for lectures, attendance, quizzes, and tests. You're gonna to wanna to read that carefully. There are things that I'm very, uh, a little bit rigid on, like things like not getting out of your seat during a quiz or test without permission unless you're done. Things like losing credit for homework, quizzes, and tests that you don't appear for. If you miss any of those, you're gonna get 20% off. Whatever that was worth, minus 20%. This is to differentiate folks who uh, are struggling to learn the material and haven't yet from those who are irresponsible and don't follow through on their 
commitments. So uh, this is an important piece to follow through on everything you sign up to do. If you're signed up in my class, either drop it or be there and turn everything in. This is an important life skill, and this these points reflect that. Also, email communications. I expect each email about this class to have the email in the subject, the uh, excuse me, the class number in the subject line, and uh, and this talks about that so that I can recognize which class this is for and deal with this information precisely. I'm going to encourage you to come to my office hours, though, if you have any questions. Or if you're industry professional, you have questions, I recommend just putting comments right on the videos themselves, and I will do my best to respond. Students are welcome to do that, too. This talks about academic integrity, including Discord use. And, uh, and this talks about online test procedures and expectations. You could ignore this unless we go online, and then you're going to need to read this carefully. Um, one thing that's different about my class from others is I expect students to grade their own homework. I give the homework, I have the answers to the homework, and I have this rubric which tells you how to grade your own homework. I reserve the right, obviously, to change your grade based on my perception of what you did, but this way you can get credit for doing the work, and the first piece of that is doing the work uh, in an appropriate manner and then claiming credit for it. And this will talk about how that's done. Basically, in a nutshell, it's if you do every problem and you get them, you match my answers, that's going to be five points per problem. So a 10 problem homework will be worth 100 points. And the way that will be scored is points that you've scored that you're claiming over the points possible circled. And then there's a little uh, thing for extra credit. We'll talk about that in a moment. This here talks about extra credit. I give a lot of extra credit in my class, and this talks about how you can claim it. Some of the credit I will award for you, and others I will blurt out, like let's say we're in class, you say something clever or something insightful, or you catch one of my mistakes, I'm liable to say, hey, plus one extra credit. That is offering you extra credit that you then have to claim. The way you claim that, that's called in-house, in-class extra credit. The way you'll claim it, let's say this is lecture five when this occurs, then on homework number five, you will claim the extra credit. And this talks about how to do that. Okay, we'll talk about that briefly when we look at the homework in just a minute. In fact, I think we'll switch over there now. So this is a, <clears throat> so this is an example homework problem uh, or set from statics, my statics class. This is actually the first two problems, but let's just imagine that this statics test, this statics homework, only has two problems. If that were the case, then my rubric says these are worth five points of peach. So that means the total homework is worth 10 points. If you did both problems and answered and solved, uh, got the same answers that I did, that I claimed are the answers, then you would score your points, 10 points, over the possible points, 10 points, you would circle that. That is how you score it up near the top of your page in a different color ink than what you did the homework in, preferably red, okay? That's how you claim credit. Then, if there's uh, extra credit, you will claim that off to the right. You're not gonna include that in the total. So let's say that in class on the lecture number one, I gave you, uh, told you you got two extra credit points, then you'd claim plus two ICXC for in-class extra credit. If I also uh, go over, so I have high expectations of students, I drive myself and I try to drive my students to greatness also. If I am late to class, which almost never happens, or if I take class over, which often happens, then I give extra credit. Just like if you're late to class, you're liable to miss a quiz, which is going to result in lost points. Uh, if I am late to a class, I'm going to give you points for that. And if I take a class over beyond the scheduled time, I will give you points for that. Let's say I take class over by four minutes. In that case, case you can't just claim that. But if I, at the end of class, announce, hey, it looks like we're four minutes over, therefore you can all claim 4 OTXC on this homework. That means for homework one, if I took you four minutes over, you would then write plus 4 OTXC for that. You can't claim that on a different homework. If you forgot to claim it for lecture one's homework, that means you've lost those potential free points. Has to be on the homework where the in-class or the OT was assigned. 
Uh, one other caveat, so my grading procedure is not intended to cause stress. You're going to have to read it carefully and carefully grade the first time. But what it's intended to do is give you a license to take responsibility for your own work in a way that I can, in a way that I can check it. If you, let's say that you get a different answer, let's say your speed was 9.64 and you think that your answer is correct. Let's say you believe that I made some mistake or let's say you believe that you're, there's some kind of issue with something and you think your answer is good enough. Now, normally you can't claim full credit if you don't match my answer. But if there's some reason you feel like your answer is correct, you're free to claim those points. Don't sweat over it. However, I expect you to be clear. So that means if you claim credit for part B, you would put a little note in your red right next to it. Uh, I think this is close enough. You would also put a note up there right by the extra credit. Just beneath that, you'll say C problem 1B. And that's all you need to say with a little note by the problem where you claimed credit for why you claim that credit. And then you can give yourself the benefit of the doubt. If I take a look and disagree, I may remove those points, but I won't give you any punitive scoring. But if you claim credit for something that doesn't match my answer and you don't have any kind of note flagging that, then I will uh, provide punitive points, which means I could take off the points for the problem, take off the points for more problems, or even zero out the entire homework if I feel you were not following the process. So the important thing to remove stress is to feel free to use your judgment, but make sure you communicate with me that you're using your judgment and then you'll never get punitive points taken off because we're communicating and you're moving forward, you're racing forward, not waiting for me to answer something, but you're doing it in a clear and transparent fashion. That's what I expect. And uh, that will take you a long ways in life. So that's how homework is graded, okay? Every homework, you're gonna grade. If you don't grade your homework, I'm liable to just zero the homework. Or sometimes what I will do is just give you like two points for every problem that appears like it was solved and grade you that way. But just expect if you don't grade your homework, I'm not going to either. It's going to be a zero. So make sure once you complete your homework, you carefully go through and grade it the way it's supposed to be graded. First few times, it'll probably take you a little bit of time to do this. After you've done a couple of these, it will be become very easy and quick to do this. That's the intent, okay? That's how we do with our extra credit and our homework grading. This talked about how that grading is done. This talks about how the extra credit is claimed. This talks about some resources the university has, as well as DRC students, my expectations. I would prefer to take care of that myself rather than have the DRC do that. There, um, And this uh, invites you to see me if you qualify for this and uh, allow me to help administer your accommodations. And then concluding remarks. That is my syllabus. Hopefully that is clear. And uh, this class moves fast. We learn a lot of things and students struggle to master the material. The benefit is if you can pass my class with a C or better, you're gonna stand pretty well in any strength group out there in industry, in the aerospace industry you will stand well among your peers. It is uh, the information you're gonna need to do well in a structural career. So that's my syllabus. Uh, wish you the best in my class. Have fun.